A murder investigation underway on the city's west side after a person found dead. What neighbors are saying about the shocking discovery. And more people were arrested following another round of protests in San Antonio. What we know about their charges so far. And we're watching the tropics still. We got a tropical storm down there in the Gulf of Mexico. We'll have the latest for you coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. San Antonio police say they have no doubt they are dealing with a homicide. That's right. What they don't know, though, is who shot and killed that man. His body was found this morning in a west side neighborhood in the middle of Henry Street near North Elmdorf. As Katrina Weber reports, police are not sure if that crime scene is the actual murder scene. At a dead end on Henry Street, police work to figure out how and why a man's life came to an end. Officers found him here around 6 this morning after answering a call about someone who was injured and bleeding from his head. They later realized he was, in fact, dead from a gunshot wound. I don't see nobody, and I don't see that guy in the street. Seeing all the police cars this morning, though, came as a surprise to Gregoria Hernandez, who lives nearby. She says when she got home late last night, everything seemed almost normal. And I come back 12, 12 something midnight, and I see the little car over there. She says that car parked on the normally empty street caught her attention right away. Police were desperately hoping something also was caught on camera. They went door to door looking for surveillance video, hoping to find out if the shooting happened here or somewhere else and who was behind it. Unlike the street, this case isn't exactly at a dead end. Police say although they have little to go on right now, their investigation is just beginning. Sometimes happen, oh, I can feel. Ananda says she often gets a feeling when something unusual is going to happen, and this time was no different. But police need more than a hunch to solve this case. They're looking for evidence and witnesses. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Police are trying to determine how a driver ended up hitting a pole on the south side. The crash happened around 7 this morning in the 8500 block of Somerset Road. Rescue crews tell us the woman inside the car was trapped inside. Crews had to use the jaws of life to get her out. However, police say she was talking and seemed to be even OK, though she was hurt. She was taken to the hospital. The crash knocked out the power in that area. A detention deputy no longer works for the Bear County Sheriff's Office. This comes after he was arrested early this morning. Police say he and his wife were put in handcuffs after following an incident on the south side. According to arrest records, Deputy Luis Lopez was arrested for discharging a gun in a heavily populated area. He's also charged with resisting arrest. That area was in the 1800 block of West Mallee Boulevard. Records also show his wife, Valerie Canty Lopez, was arrested. She's charged with interfering with a public servant. Police say she wouldn't listen to officers when they told her to go inside as they were trying to take her husband into custody. BCSO says Lopez resigned, but he was also issued a disarmable discharge. He started working for BCSO in the detention division back in 2018. San Antonio police say someone fired multiple shots at a home just east of downtown. One of those bullets hit a man just before one this morning. Officers got several calls from neighbors saying they heard gunshots in the 400 block of South Olive. When police got to the scene, they found multiple bullet holes in the front part of the home. Two people were inside at the time. One of them was shot in the arm. He was taken to the hospital but should be okay. No one else was hurt. Police did not provide any details on any other potential suspects. More arrests in the wake of those protests following the death of George Floyd. At least seven more people have been arrested here in San Antonio while now still waiting for all of their mug shots. But here is what we know so far. The suspects are facing a variety of charges, including rioting, criminal mischief, criminal trespassing and evading arrest. Police tell us all seven suspects live within the San Antonio city limits. This comes after another night of protests downtown and confrontation with officers in Alamo Plaza. San Antonio police tweeted out they were attacked with glass bottles while trying to disperse crowds, leading to officers using projectiles like rubber and wooden balls on the crowd. Some members of the media were also hit with the projectiles. A reporter tweeting a question to the mayor asking if he was OK with this. He responded, no, I'm not. Nuremberg says he is seeking more information into why the projectiles were used. 
Now to the latest on the unrest also happening nationwide across the country. Protests over the police killing of George Floyd continue. The family of Floyd is urging peace. ABC's Alex Perche has more from Minneapolis. This morning, the governor of Minnesota showing up at the site where George Floyd was killed, keeping a low profile, just reflecting and writing his own message at the growing memorial. George Floyd's family reacting as well. The mother of his six-year-old saying this about his daughter, Gianna. I mean, that was his baby. He loved his little girl. What do you want people to know? Kind of I miss him. The community at this makeshift memorial in Minneapolis has set the tone for the rest of the country. It's a place of peace. So far, it's the first time this week there's not been a curfew in place here. Elsewhere overnight, protesters in New York City facing off with police on the Manhattan Bridge enforcing an earlier 8 o'clock curfew after violence and widespread looting occurred on Monday. The group of 5,000 marchers eventually allowed to peacefully cross into Brooklyn. There were instances of clashes in some cities. Pepper spray shot into crowds in Boston and in Portland and in Seattle. A state trooper overheard preparing his fellow officers for a likely clash with demonstrators. But after days of images of cities set on fire and violence, the calls for calm seeming to be answered. In Los Angeles, a large group of protesters bringing their demonstration to Mayor Garcetti's front steps. Garcetti greeting them and taking a knee. Protesters also seen peacefully outside Gracie Mansion, the official home of the mayor of New York City. Hospital workers nearby who've worked tirelessly during this COVID-19 pandemic, taking a knee in solidarity with the Floyd family. In Houston, George Floyd's hometown, more than 60,000 people coming together, marching alongside his family and friends. There's still the question of those additional charges against the other officers involved in this case. The Floyd family attorney saying he expects those to come before Floyd is laid to rest next week. Alex Perche, ABC News, Minneapolis. Meantime, back here at home, in light of those recent protests, city leaders have announced that Alamo Plaza will be closed every night this week. The move is an attempt to minimize the possibility of further damage. The plaza will close every night at 8.30. San Antonio Police Department will have an increased presence around the plaza and downtown to prevent any potential disturbances. The plaza will then reopen every morning at 6. The closures will last through Sunday morning, but could be extended if city leaders deem it necessary. Mayor Ron Nirenberg gave his State of the City address last night from his office. The 20-minute address was especially unusual amid the coronavirus pandemic. Our Sarah Acosta gives us the highlights from his speech. Extraordinary times. That was the description Mayor Ron Nirenberg used to begin his State of the City speech last night. Speaking live from his office, the mayor's third ever address was certainly unusual. The mayor's nearly 20 minute speech focused heavily on the COVID-19 pandemic. As those issues took center stage, Nirenberg swept the plans that began the year in the spotlight. The transportation system improvements off into the wings. The mayor also spoke briefly about the ongoing protests in the city. He drew a distinction between what he called legitimate marches for justice and unfortunate violence by opportunists. He spoke about the city council's upcoming vote on a $191 million recovering resiliency plan. That plan will include money for job training, rent assistance, small business grants, and internet access for students. Nirenberg says the city is prepared if a second wave of the coronavirus strikes. COVID is a tragedy, but the pandemic can be an agent of monumental change if we use it as a catalyst to solve the challenges that have hindered our ability to reach the next level. The pandemic hasn't just taken a toll on the economy, but on the city's budget, which is expected to see a nearly $200 million hit in revenue this year. Nirenberg hinted to a much slimmer budget for next year. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Still coming up this half hour, the Houston Texans losing out on defensive help. Larry Mears will explain what that means coming up in a few minutes. And a popular spot in San Antonio reopened this morning. What business owners in Market Square want you to know if you're planning on heading over there. And the Senate. The San Antonio Food Bank is hosting a day of honor and service for George Floyd. The day of service will be next Tuesday, June 9th, to serve those in need in the community on the day Floyd's family will be holding their 
private funeral service. According to a press release, the food bank will open up extra volunteer opportunities, including a mobile pop-up distribution center at Trader's Village for those who want to help out. You can sign up for a shift at safoodbank.org. A popular spot in San Antonio is welcoming folks back after shutting down due to COVID-19. Market Square officially reopened this morning. Around 100 small family-owned businesses are back up running. They opened their doors this morning at 10. However, everything isn't completely back to normal. Business owners say they're taking extra precautions to make sure everyone stays safe and healthy. We're absolutely taking special precautions. I do want to let everybody know that we have taken a pledge as business owners here at Market Square to make sure that we continue our social distancing. We obviously are wearing masks right now, not for the interview, but we do wear our masks and um, we are sanitizing after our customers come through. Uh, we want to make sure that they have a safe environment. There are some things to keep in mind if you're planning to head down there. Business in Market Square will have modified hours of operation. They will be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Wednesday through Sunday and will be closed Monday and Tuesday. Outside with live cam already a little hotter than it was yesterday oh, at this yeah. time. That tells me humidity is up and there's no rain in sight. Well, mm. maybe a little. There, but. There's a little bit on the radar, but not much. Uh, and, and rain chances are really going to start to come to an end. Temperatures are going to be on their way up. We're talking 90s potentially today and then upper 90s by the time we get into the weekend. The aquifer is still doing OK. It's up a tenth of a foot to 672.2. In your pollen count, mold is on its way down. It's at 2,250. That's a good sight to see. Grass is low. We're going to talk about some of these hot temperatures and what's going on in the tropics coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather streaming free on KSAT TV. Taking a look right now at weather. Of course, we know the humidity is up. I'm just yeah. curious. Does it mess with y'all's hair as much as it jacks up our mm. hair? Well, you got to have some hair for it to mess with. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin, you got some hair. Are you over talking there? about me, David? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, so yes, the horometer tells us there's a lot of humidity out there today. It is intense. Uh, the humidity is going to be with us through the afternoon. It's also helping to create some showers out there. Not really any storms. We're not seeing a lot of lightning strikes or anything like that, but these are quick downpours. Everything's trying to work off to the north and west, but so far it hasn't had a whole lot of luck making it any closer to San Antonio. So I'd say the favorite area today for rain is going to be uh, Pleasanton, Floresville, Kennedy over to Cuero. Those are the areas that may see some of these quick downpours and you're just not going to get a whole lot of rain out of these. Uh, but it is nice still to see some rain on the radar, at least for now. I think as we go into the next couple days, uh, this is going to start winding down. Uh, over the last 24 hours, we did see a little bit of rain. Some good downpours yesterday. Tried to work through San Antonio. Only a hundredth of an inch at the airport. Some places, though, picked up a little bit more, especially down there towards Bronick Lake. Almost an inch. Uh, and uh, about four hundredths of an inch in LMO Ranch, not much there. It was really spotty, and that's going to be the case today. As we look at the visible satellite picture, we see these clouds trying to bubble up and uh, sort of thinning out a little bit. But this, uh, again, anywhere across the area has a chance to see a pop up shower or storm. But I'd say your best chance is going to be down here south and east of San Antonio. And even then, we're talking about a 20% shot here, so it's not great. 82 right now in Comfort, 79 Bernie Stage, 86 in New Braunfels, 84 Hondo, 88 in Divine, 88 in Beeville, 84 Katula. Then you got to factor in this humidity and it makes it feel all that much worse. The heat index right now at this hour, 89 here in town, 93 in Gonzales, 85 is what it feels like currently in Kerrville. And those numbers are only going to go up. Uh, Futurecast does show a couple of isolated showers and storms around 7 o'clock. And then as we lose the daytime heating, they go away. And then tomorrow, Really nothing. I can't count out a shower a little bit closer to the coast with the sea breeze, but I don't think we're going to see much at all around here. It's going to be hotter and uh, somewhat drier. We're going to see that going forward even into the weekend. And one factor we're going to have to look at here is the uh, tropics. We've got tropical storm crystal ball down there. And right now it has made landfall. Uh, winds are at 60 miles per hour. It's made landfall there in Mexico, uh, but it's going to reemerge back into the Gulf of Mexico and then eventually move north. It'll sit down here for a while, but eventually it'll move north. And uh, the latest track from the Hurricane Center takes it almost due north and puts it back at a tropical storm uh, strength here, 65 miles per hour. That would be Sunday morning. And then the uh, latest track then takes it somewhere between Houston and uh, Alabama here. So there's still a large swath 
on to where this thing could move. You don't want to focus too much on this line because uh, the forecast is still a little bit uncertain. But one thing we're pretty sure of at this point is that it will likely move east of South Texas, which means we're going to be on the dry side of things and also the hot side of things. A lot of times on the back side of these tropical systems, you can get sinking air and it tends to allow those temperatures to really ramp up. So the forecast for today up around 90 for a high 20% chance of rain. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then we'll go 92 Thursday, 94 Friday, and then by the weekend, we're talking mid to upper 90s. And then next week, we could be looking at potentially triple digits. It looks like it'll be really oh, hot. No. Mm. Oh, uh, no. So, yeah. It's got to oh. stay hydrated, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Justin, thank yep. you. <laughs> you know, yesterday afternoon, you could hear this collective, oh, man, from all <laughs> these sportscasters that are all over the state of Texas knowing no California this year. You know what? Because, not going to lie, we really look forward to those Marriott nights and those Marriott points. <laughs> Greg Simmons and his crew not getting any Marriott points this year, at least for going to California. Uh, That's because Cowboys camp will now be held in Frisco this summer. And in high school, sports sacks student athletes went back to school to start working out. Coming up. I clearly understand uh, what training camp needs to look like, and, and I just got to make sure we're ready to do it at either Oxford or Frisco. Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy was waiting for a decision on where they could hold training camp, and now he's got it so long. Oxnard, hello, Frisco, and Big Board Sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. For the first time since 2011, the Dallas Cowboys will not hold their training camp in California. That's after the league told all 32 teams that all training camps will be held at the team's training facilities this summer due to the coronavirus. The Cowboys were in the last year of their training camp contract with Oxnard, but city officials had said that negotiations were underway for a three-year extension. The big advantage to holding their training camp in California was the weather, where a hot day outside was in the upper 70s in the middle of summer, and the hotel complex has two grass fields. At the Star in Frisco, the Cowboys have one grass field, one turf field outside, and also have access to the Ford Center, which is a 12,000-seat stadium. Normally, training camp opens in the third week of July, but the NFL has not issued an opening date as yet. Former Eagles defensive end Timmy Jernigan will no longer sign with the Texans, according to reports. Jernigan, who had reached an agreement on a one-year $3.25 million deal with Houston, did not take a physical with the Texans and is not expected to do so, with each side agreeing to part ways. He confirmed he wasn't heading to Houston on his Instagram story, leaving his immediate future in the NFL uncertain. Injuries have hurt his once promising career. He's only played in 13 games the past two seasons due to neck and foot injuries. Now he's once again a free agent and looking for another new start. San Antonio Christian School is one of the first to allow student athletes back on campus, beginning with limited summer workouts at 7 in the morning. That's after TAPS announced last week that workouts can begin on June 1st, one week ahead of the University Interscholastic League's June 8th reopening. It's been more than two and a half months since the coronavirus ended. High school sports canceled in the middle of the Boys State High School basketball tournament in the Alamo Dome on March. Sachs welcoming back some 70 student athletes, including members of its football team, and they couldn't be happier. It's really exciting to see the guys and to get to work with everyone. It's, it's been hard to work out alone and find the motivation, but with the guys, it's a lot easier. They can push you to your limit. When I first heard that we were coming back, uh, I, that night I couldn't sleep. Uh, it was so, I was so happy uh, to be out back here. Uh, with all my guys. Uh, we're a family out here. It's so exciting to be back. Usually first day of summer strength and conditioning, they're dreading it. Uh, but no, they're bouncing around and there's an energy and an enthusiasm that is great to see. It is great to see them back. <laughs> and, and that's cool because I think that's what they miss the most, just that team companionship oh, and yeah. camaraderie. And we miss watching the big boys out there breathing hard, sweating, <laughs> yeah, getting right. after it. There you go. Fun stuff. All right. Thanks, Larry. Hey, gyms have started to reopen, and they now have to figure out how to ensure the health and safety of clients and employees. Still ahead, what gyms across the country are doing to follow social distance guidelines, and what can you do to make sure you stay safe? And we first thought the summer heat could help stop the spread of the coronavirus, but that might not be true now. Coming up in the next half hour, find out what the head of the National Institute of Health is saying about this topic. 
And coming up new today at five, from social media to online bills and banking, chances are if you have a handful of passwords, you have to remember. And that can be a challenge. And that's where Reliable Password Manager comes in. A look at which one does the trick today at five, coming up after Entertainment Tonight. Protesters taking to the streets in countries around the world in the wake of George Floyd's death. Here's ABC's Julian McFarland with more about how those countries are supporting this movement. A spark in America lighting up major cities around the world. In Paris, thousands taking to the streets in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Defying a coronavirus curfew in place, protesters tear-gassed, clashing with riot police. The sister of Adama Traore, a black Frenchman who died in police custody in 2016, taking the stage saying, the list is too long. What's happening in the United States has brought to light what's happening in France. George Floyd's last words painted onto banners in French and English, I can't breathe. They're killing us, one protester says. We have to rise up. And they are rising up, as far away as Sydney, Australia. Demonstrators marching towards the New South Wales State Parliament, calling for an end to racism. George Floyd's story resonating with Aboriginal Australians who joined the protest. I'm tired of our people being villainised. I'm tired of our people being harassed. I'm tired of our people being killed. And London's Hyde Park, crowds taking to the streets to support the movement in the United States and calling for an end to black deaths and police custody in the UK. And in Italy, Pope Francis giving an extraordinary speech, naming George Floyd condemning racism. La tragica morte del signor George Floyd. Saying it was incompatible with Christian values. Nine days of protests in the United States, but this has ignited a global conversation. People around the world voicing their anger at inequality and systemic racism at a time when a global pandemic and a growing economic crisis are also disproportionately affecting black people around the world. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Back here in the States, with only five more months until the 2020 presidential election, there's still a stark divide between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. As America continues to struggle with the ongoing protests amid the coronavirus pandemic, both are responding in different ways. President Trump calling for law and order with force as Americans protest against police brutality and racial inequality. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. Former Vice President Joe Biden's responses to the protests have been different from President Trump's. Biden met with members of a black church in Delaware, even took a knee. Biden also called George Floyd's death a wake-up call for the nation. A severe cyclone has hit the Arabian Sea off India's west coast. The director general of the country's National Disaster Response Force says the cyclone gathers speed as it barreled toward India's financial capital of Mumbai. Around 100,000 people in parts of the western states were evacuated from low-lying areas. This latest cyclone comes just two weeks after another cyclone hit through India's east coast, killing more than 100 people. June hurricane season. We got that going on. We got something down in Mexico in the Gulf Coast, right down there on land down there. Well, and we got crazy stuff happening. Got a lot of heat today, too. Yeah, a lot of heat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it promises to be a busy tropical season here uh, in the Atlantic, too. So a lot going on today. We've got a couple showers on the radar, mainly there in Atascosa County, you see around Pleasanton, a few showers uh, east of Kennedy. And uh, we'll zoom in a little bit closer here on this activity around Pleasanton, just to the uh, south and southeast of Poteet there, uh, moving along I-37. These may drop some pretty good rain. We're not seeing a whole lot of lightning strikes with this, uh, but we could see a little bit. We'll turn on the lightning here. Uh, actually, it was turned on, so we're not seeing any strikes at this hour. It's just going to be some good downpours. Will these make it to San Antonio? Chances are they won't. I, I think a lot of this falls apart before it makes it into town, but we can't roll out a shower or storm uh, today, even here in town. But the coverage is going to be a little bit less than what it was yesterday. Temperature-wise, 84 degrees at the airport, 86 Bolverde, 83 Bandera, 83 in Tarpley. It's warm out there, and it's also humid, so we got a heat index to worry about. 
Forecast for today takes us up to 90 for a high, about a 20% chance rain. That falls off tonight once we lose the daytime heating and winds will generally be pretty light. Southeasterly, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Of course, the question is, what does Tropical Storm Cristobal, what kind of effects will it have on South Texas? We're going to talk more about that in the forecast coming up here in just a couple minutes. Japney. Now, gyms are social places where people share equipment and exercise in close quarters with strangers. This is all changing, though. However, as gyms begin to reopen in parts of the country amid the COVID-19 pandemic, with more, here's ABC's Ines de la Cuerta. With COVID-19 restrictions beginning to ease, gyms will start to reopen and business owners now must reimagine their fitness spaces to ensure the health of their clients. Some gym owners saying they're adding restrictions like wearing masks, mandatory wiping down of equipment, and keeping the gym at 25% capacity. They are also upping cleaning protocols with more frequent and thorough sanitation. Equinox, a national gym chain, told its members they will need to book visits, complete a self-health check via the gym's app, and have their temperatures checked using touchless thermometers upon arrival. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Simone Wilds says that people who live in areas where COVID-19 still has a major present and are at high risks of developing severe symptoms should be cautious when returning to the gym. According to Wilds, gyms have a lot of high-touch surfaces. People are breathing heavily and forcefully exhaling, and it's harder to maintain six feet of distance, all of which increases the risk of contracting the virus. If it's allowed and you are ready to head to the gym to practice safe social distancing, distancing, clean equipment before and after, and wear a cloth face covering. Don't forget to read your gym's COVID-19 guidelines and make sure they are taking the right precautions. With this Medical Minute, I'm Inez de la Quatera, ABC News. Summer heat unlikely to stop the spread of coronavirus. That's according to the head of the National Institutes of Health. In a blog posted on Tuesday, Dr. Francis Collins said, quote, Climate only would become an important seasonal factor in controlling COVID-19 once a large portion of people within a given community or immune or resistant to infection, end quote. Early in the pandemic, President Donald Trump speculated summer heat would lessen the spread and possibly kill the virus. Do you like to go fishing like myself, but don't have a license? Well, next week is your chance to do so. Next Tuesday is free fishing day. We will tell you all you need to know to prepare for your fishing experience. And there is college football happening just up the road in San Marcos. At least a small start to the college ball. Larry Mears with that coming up in sports. Plus, as the coronavirus pandemic lightens up slowly, many companies are working on producing ventilators for COVID-19 patients. After the break, two more FDA recently approved. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. In your consumer news this noon, the Congressional Budget Office said it could take most of next decade for the U.S. economy to recover from the impact of the coronavirus. The office warns the pandemic will cut economic output over the next decade by $7.9 trillion, or 3% of GDP during the decade. And that's compared to CBO projections from January. The CBO said in a statement there's a lot of uncertainty in the forecast because we aren't sure how long the coronavirus will last. Air travel is starting to bounce back after being one of the most affected industries during the pandemic. The Transportation Security Administration says the number of people going through airport security checkpoints nearly doubled over in May. They say they screened almost 949,000 passengers over the last weekend compared to 476,000 people over the first weekend in May. Even though the number is increasing, it's nowhere near from before the pandemic. The FDA has approved designs from NASA and Fitbit for ventilators made to help coronavirus patients. NASA's Vital uses an internal compressor that's meant to last three to four months. And this is NASA's second ventilator design approved by the FDA. The Fitbit Flow is meant to be inexpensive and easy to use. It is a continuous respiratory support system and includes an FDA approved manual resuscitation as part of the design. Flow is intended for use by clinicians when a commercial ventilator isn't available. 
KSAC Community is partnering up with the San Antonio Food Bank this month in the Spurs Cafe, Spurs to Give it Together Fund. Through the end of the June, the food bank will be utilizing donated funds to partner with restaurants who will be using their kitchens and chefs to create scratch, nutritious, ready-to-heat prepared meals for those in need. In May, Spurs Give and the Tim Duncan Foundation matched donations of $200,000 as part of the new initiative. If you would like to give or are in need of assistance, visit our website at ksat.com for the full details. Just type in KSAT community in the search bar. Outside with live cam, we have established the humidity is here. A few thunderstorms just popping up here and there. Not, not too bad though, but uh, it's still pretty humid. It's humid. And yeah, we, we sort of avoided this heat for a while, right? Yeah. Now it's time. It's about that time. The uh, temperatures are going to start heating up. 84 degrees so far today. I think we'll get into the 90s this afternoon. The averages are 91 and 71, and we'll probably be pretty close to that. Records are 148. 100 was set back in 2008, and obviously no rainfall today. There could be a little bit here in San Antonio, but we're not expecting much. In fact, temperatures may eventually make it into the triple digits. We'll talk about that forecast coming up. This Saturday, Texas celebrates its free fishing day. Typically, you need a fishing license to fish anywhere in the Lone Star State. You can cast them on any body of water, salt or fresh in Texas, just this Saturday for free. What's awesome about it? It's the way to educate people about the need for fishing license, but also you get to fish for free. 100% of your fishing license fees goes toward Texas Parks and Wildlife Department for the on ground conservation efforts like fish stocking. License fees vary depending on how long it's for and what type of water you are fishing in, salt or fresh. They can range from 47 bucks down to $11. And you can buy them online or at a certain fishing or sports retailers. But this Saturday, Texans can fish on any public body of water in the state without a fishing license. This day is especially good for first-time fishermen and women. Texas Parks and Wildlife Department will have all kinds of fishing 101 videos and tips online for first-time fishers. We have those links online at ksat.com. This day also encourages you to get outside and explore what bodies of of water you have in our area. You know, when I was a child back in Arkansas, I used to fish all the time with my dad. There's nothing like going out with your dad fishing. Girls, guys, everybody, go out fish. It's enjoy peaceful. The outdoors. Saturday <laughs> should be a pretty good day for fishing, too. For sure. I hope. Yeah, find a uh, shade tree. Oh. Yeah, we find a shade tree, tree and then you know, fish from there. It'd be perfect. Uh, well, then you it, get your lure hung up in the tree. Yeah. I, I didn't think about that. Okay. <laughs> Not a problem. Never mind. Don't listen to me. But, uh, yes, go out there and fish. It should be a lot of fun. It, it, the weather is going to cooperate, I think, for the most part. And as we look at the radar, you'll notice we've got some showers lining up here to the south and east of San Antonio. That's where most of the activity is going to be today. Uh, but we are picking up on some decent downpours there in Atascosa County, although just in the last couple of frames, it looks a lot of, like a lot of this is starting to die down right around Pleasanton. It missed you just to the east there, getting some good downpours right along uh, Interstate 37. That's generally south of San Antonio. And as we look off to the east here, some activity just east of Rungi up towards Yorktown. No lightning strikes with this, so it's just, again, some quick moving downpours. And will these make it into San Antonio? It's possible, but probably not. Uh, looks like a lot of this, again, is going to stay down to our south and east. And that's what the computer models are showing for the most part. Uh, just some isolated stuff. We're going to keep a 20% chance of rain in the forecast. If you're in the hill country, probably not going to see anything at all. And uh, just some partly cloudy skies. As we get into tomorrow, notice the rain chances are even lower here. So this is 5 o'clock tomorrow. Just maybe a shower. Now would be with the sea breeze. But high pressure is starting to build in. And that really is going to take away our rain chances going forward. Well, looking at the visible satellite picture, we have scattered clouds out there, and some of those are trying to bubble up into some showers, but nothing here around Bear County right now. Temperatures plenty warm, 84 degrees at the airport, 86 New Braunfels, 81 Bernie Stage, 84 right now in Hondo, and you're checking in at 77. That's one of the cool spots there, Rock Springs, 84 down in Catula, and 86 out in Gonzales. Uh, dew points are awful high. We're talking low 70s here. It's extremely sticky out there. Uh, it, these numbers are going to stay high all day long, but I think going forward we'll, we'll see some slightly drier air try to move into South Texas, which will be helpful when it comes to the heat index. This is your feels like temperature and it is up to 89 already here in San Antonio. I would imagine we'll get heat indices into the mid 90s this afternoon in a lot of spots. All right, Tropical Storm Cristobal is still going down there, uh, still moving kind of south at this point very, very slowly. 
and the uh, winds right now at 50 miles per hour. So this is down a little bit from what we talked about earlier, and that's because it's interacting with land. In fact, this may weaken into a tropical depression, and as long as it doesn't fall apart, which all indications are that it won't, it'll start to reemerge into the Gulf of Mexico and then probably form back into a tropical storm as it moves north. And then by Sunday morning, we're talking about winds at 65 miles per hour. So closing in on hurricane strength there, but still just a tropical storm. At least that's the forecast right now. And then the uh, the latest cone here showing where this thing could move anywhere from Houston over to Alabama. And there's still some uncertainty there. But one thing we're fairly sure of at this point is that it will be east of South Texas. So we'll probably miss out on a lot of the effects of this tropical storm. One side effect that though is that uh, we will see some drier air on the back side of it and that tends to make things pretty warm so we'll probably see some pretty toasty temperatures going into next week 90 degrees today 20 percent chance of a shower or storm we'll go 92 tomorrow 94 friday and then mid 90s over the weekend hot maybe a few more clouds sunday and monday if that tropical system throws some clouds in our direction and then we could be talking about triple digits next week on tuesday guys by the way, the experience comes from being in the tree with a lure. So that's, yeah. that's how, Just don't get it that stuck. Happen, don't get it stuck, though, because you would take Dad off. Yeah, yeah. because <laughs> yeah, Dad's got to go up and get yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just, That's just a pain. So stay out of the, under the tree when you're casting. Okay. Um, tomorrow's a huge day in the NBA. It is. Tomorrow, mm, huge, huge. NBA Board of Governors will vote uh, when to resume the season and what the plan is, and it looks like it's going to be a 22 team plan starting at the very end of July. So some positive news for the NBA. Plus, UFC champ John Jones went after two teens with spray paint. Coming up. Tomorrow afternoon, the NBA Board of Governors will vote on the league's proposal to return to play with a 22-team format reportedly leading the way. The Woj is now saying that each of the 22 teams will play eight regular season games for seeding purposes for the playoffs. If the 22-team format wins, then the Spurs, who currently sit 20th overall, would make the cut. They are four games back of the Memphis Grizzlies for the eighth and final playoff spot in the West. If the season does resume at the Wide World of Sports Complex in Orlando on July 31st, then last possible date for the NBA Finals Game 7 would be October 12th. That is the timeline that was shared with all teams, according to ESPN. PN with the NBA draft and the start of free agency to follow in October. The NBA needs a three-fourths majority of owners to approve a return to play plan. San Antonio Christian School became one of the first schools in San Antonio to welcome back student athletes to their campus since high school sports was shut down in March. More than 70 student athletes, including 30 plus football players, reported to SAC's campus for limited early morning workouts after TAPS gave the green light, allowing limited strength and conditioning beginning June 1st after the coronavirus forced all sports sports to be shut down in mid-March. They make it uh, very adaptable um, <clears throat> and they're you know trying to keep us safe with all the cones and uh, all the distancing um, but yes sir it, it's not too weird. We can adapt to it and it is a change but it'll help us in the long run still be able to condition out here even with all the coronavirus issues. A lot of guidelines to follow. There are days where you're reading through the guidelines and you go Man, is it even worth it? But we do believe it's worth it just, just to get them together. The UIL will allow high schools under their umbrella to return for limited workouts on June the 8th. On Monday, the Texas State Bobcats also welcome back 53 student athletes in their football program as part of a three-phase plan that also allows athletic staff members to return to their offices on the San Marcos campus. As part of the plan, each staff member and athletes has to enter the school facilities through controlled entry areas where their temperatures are checked and they go through symptom screenings for the coronavirus. Social distancing is required and where it's not possible, face masks must be worn during indoor workouts. Phase one also allows voluntary workouts in groups of no more than 10 players in the weight rooms, training rooms, and on the Jim Wacker football field. UFC light heavyweight champion John Jones isn't going to stand for people trying to vandalize where he lives. Jones confronted two teenagers carrying spray cans around Albuquerque, New Mexico over the weekend and posted video of the incident on his Instagram page. The video shows Jones on a busy street where one guy gives up his can of paint. Then Jones goes back to the sidewalk demanding the paint from the other teen who also wisely gave up the spray paint. Jones continued his work in the city on Monday, helping local businesses clean up after destruction over the weekend 
break-in and boarding up windows. I love UFC, but I also love great deeds like that, especially in a time yeah, right. during this period here, you know. And who's going to mess with that guy? Exactly. <laughs> You're smart not to, that's yeah. for sure. It would be kind of crazy to start to mess with that guy, huh? A little big, strong. We have a delightful and delectable show coming up on SA Live. Here's a preview with Mike and Fiona. Gadgets, goodies, and gifts for dad. It's an excellent, extravagant, and egg extra tasty <laughs> episode of SA Live. You'll get that in a bit. The San Antonio Zoo is back in business. We'll show you the new changes and the gentle giants who are there to greet us. Egg extraordinary uses for the ordinary egg. Today we share a few recipes that are definitely elevated and you won't believe how inexpensive they are to make. Mm, look at that. Ooey gooey goodness. These treats look uh, amazing. Uh, 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 not Zing. till the show. But what's really amazing is how a local couple survived opening a shop and having a baby all during the pandemic. Well, move on over, charcoal and gas. There's a new grill in town. We'll show you some of the latest and greatest for your summer cookout. What are you getting for Father's Day? No need to spend a lot or hit up the stores. We've got great gifts that won't break the bank. Need some ideas for family dinner night? We've got some brand new flavors that will jazz up your chicken. The best gift for dad? A healthier life. How you can help the man in your life feel better than he has in years. A brand new essay Live is just minutes away.